Hi there, welcome to the RPS project. Today I'm going to be looking at an op amp as an inverting amplifier. Sounds simple, should be easy enough to do. Apparently you just uh, add some negative feedback and uh, away you go with a few components and uh, that's it. Simple? No, not simple. Actually, it can be quite a pain to set up as I found out, trying to learn how to how to use a, an op amp as an inverting amplifier. It's a few things to take into consideration and the biggest thing to take into consideration is the power supply. Um, they were originally designed to be with a split rail, so you've got a positive and a negative rail um, power supply to the actual op amp for its uh, um, supply. Um, but a lot of time you only have a single rail, like I do. Um, so you have to bias up the circuit correctly to make it work and um, uh, that's led me into all sorts of uh, problems and trying to understand how to make this work but uh, I think I might be getting there with this so let's start off with a look at the whiteboard and then we'll go and have a look at the circuit and see if I'm actually making headway with this inverting amplifier okay so this is my basic circuit this is what you should be getting with an op amp if you want an inverting amplifier negative feedback you have to have your negative feed neg negative 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 feedback and your input comes in here onto the inverting input the non-inverting input goes to ground and that's your output and minus supply or ground plus voltage now the problem being here is that most of the time I'm working with a single supply, not a split rail. So if you've got a split rail and you've got that minus voltage, you just put in your signal that's around ground as your input and you get an output. Well, hey, whether it be a minus or a plus, which is brilliant. But if you've only got ground at this point, Then you, this needs to change because you can't go negative with that being at ground so you have to bias the op amp to a plus voltage so let's say this is 12 volts then I probably choose something like 6 volts is my bias. You've also got to be careful because you've got to bias your signal up as well so that um, it comes in properly. Let's take a look at another circuit um, that I've actually got made up on the breadboard. Okay so this is the uh, um, first uh, sort of circuit that I'd looked at and set up try and understand what was going on and it's just looking at DC to understand what's going on with this. Now I suppose I should point out a couple of things that I learned that everybody seems to say when you're um, looking up about op amps is that first of all no current will flow into the op amp so any current has got to flow around it through some circuit and secondly the non-inverting and the inverting inputs will try to be the same um, in some fashion it, it's internal workings whatever's going on I don't know what the inside looks like of, a, of an op amp but basically they try to be the same it's, it's the basic effect of that so what we have on this circuit very simple I've got 12 volts coming in I've got a 5 volt regulator here so I've got 5 volts at that point this is just a voltage divider so I've got six volts there. So if that rule is true, then I should have six volts there. So that means that I've got to lose one volt across that resistor. One volt across 100K means I've got one milliamp. Yeah. One milliamp flow in there, 
And if I've got one milliamp flowing there, then because there's no current can go into the inputs of this op amp, then it's got to be going through this resistor here. That's a 2K resistor. So that would mean that I'm going to have 2K with one milliamp. That's going to give me two volts across that resistor. So my output, as my output and everything else tries to be equal and the same, that would mean I'm going to end up with eight volts, supposedly. Of course, that's ideal. Um, probably find all the voltages are slightly different because, you know, when you're doing it yourself, nothing quite matches, but that's ideal. So let's have a look at that actually on the breadboard and see if I get something close to that. Okay, so here's my uh, little circuit, um, very simple, uh, an LM358 uh, op amp, just using the one op amp. Um, called resistors, inputs, um, negative feedback resistors, a little capacitor just to help stability on the um, non-inverting input. My 5 volt regulator and I've got 12 volts coming in, so 6 there. Well, let's have a look at the um, and the measurements, let's see what voltages I am actually getting. So my input voltage for my uh, op amp, 11.95, so we're not quite got the proper 12 volts, so uh, a little bit of um, uh, change in the voltage there, so that's that's my input, so my non-inverting input, let's have a look at that, 5.96, and my inverting input, if I can get in there, 5.96, so it's the same, so my input now onto my non-inverting input into my negative feedback resistors which the first one is 1k I've got 5 volts just over so I got a voltage less just under from between my input my inverted input and my actual voltage input that I put in there so if I look at the voltage across R2, I think I called it, I've got literally just under a volt. So I should have just under 2 volts across the 2K R1 resistor, which I've got two resistors in there because I don't have a 2K, so I've just got two 1Ks in series. Uh, if I get that to get on it, like shorten everything out. 1.87 or thereabouts so just under 2 volts so that means that my output should be around about 8 volts or just under so the output is there 7.86 so there we go um, as far as the DC side goes that proves that the op amp is basically doing what I expect it to do you know it, it's creating a uh, feedback and forcing the output to change to accommodate the fact that the inverting and non-inverting inputs are going to be the same. So as you can see from the uh, breadboard that those voltages are, are relatively right, aren't they? They sort of demonstrate that the op amp is doing sort of what I want it to be doing. You know, it's changing the output to uh, make both the inputs uh, the same and that input is uh, giving that uh, that circuit a current flow to, to make that all happen. Now, to use it with um, as an amplifier and to actually see that working, I'm going to put in a sine wave um, into the input. And this is where it really all got quite tricky for me because what I found was the DC bias, and putting onto the non-inverting, I was linking this up and this point, the input, I was linking them up with both the same same voltage. And the problem I found was that my SIG Gen, when it gives, gives that output, it's given that output with the sine wave being referenced to, to ground. So it's going above and below the, the ground point um, or zero voltage. And the trouble with that is 
it doesn't get added to this six volts it just sits there at the ground point trying to force it out at the ground um, so the six volts don't really do anything you need to have a setup where you can put your six volts into your sig gen and then that signal sits on top of your six volts or whatever your voltage you're putting in there mine doesn't so basically what i've had to use is the offset voltage on the sig gen to make this voltage sit at the right level so that this is my offset this is what changes where that voltage output will be this does to some extent as well but um, in combination with the both of them I've managed to get it so that hopefully I will get a steady output but this is basically the same the same um, negative feedback it's just that I'm using a separate independent um, power supply for my bias on the op amp and I'm using the offset voltage on the sig gen to give me a positive voltage for this to carry this um, sine wave that I'm going to be putting onto the onto the input so let's have a look at that and see if I've got that working okay so now I've just uh, amended my circuit a bit I've got um, independent power coming in on the bias there which is a variable supply and my um, input signal coming in here that's going to be biased to uh, a positive voltage um, and scope on input and output so uh, well see if I can uh, pan up on this and you can see I've got six volts on the variable input for the uh, bias on the non-inverting input about six volts and this is my current input I'm currently inputting one megahertz sine wave with um, amplitude of 2.5 volts and the offset is 6 volts so I'm it's the, the sine wave is sitting on top of 6 volts so the, the, the ground point is effectively 6 volt reference so um, let's have a look at the scope and um, see what I'm actually getting out of this little circuit now okay so now I've got this on the scope you can see two signals which is brilliant so I'm actually getting an output seems to be doing something right and it took me a long time to get this because of biasing one the um, non-inverting input and to bias the um, actual signal coming in now the red um, trace is the channel one which is my input and as you can see my output is higher now just so you know my ground point is down here channel 1 and channel 2 is down here and I've put the cursors on you'll see why in a bit um, pick this up from a few other youtubers who have used this sort of display um, thanks to all of them um, who've uh, helped me to understand this circuit so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the bias point of my input signal for, on my sig gen so you just can see what it does to the signal so I'm at 6 volts so if I turn it down I as it's an inverting um, amplifier it shifts it so I'm looking really for sort of like the midpoint where it sort of crosses over together which is at the moment seems to be about 5.7 5 5.8 is is that sort of midpoint I think yeah I reckon so 5.8 volts now my bias point on my non-inverted input which we should alter where this output signal goes so if I increase that and you can see it shifts it up but at some point it starts to clip because the op amp only has an ability to deal with voltages up to and below a certain uh, and down to a certain voltage so as I turn it up eventually it disappears at about 8.4 volts I've got no signal left so if I bias this down and turn down the bias of voltage on the non-inverted input at some point I hit the bottom rail and I start to lose my signal completely uh, until eventually at about 3.3 .3 volts it's all gone so as you can see 
um, there is a point where you can't get any more signal. Uh, let's turn that 5.9, it's about 6 volts. I don't know if you can actually see this, but there is a little bit of distortion just in the crossover point on the output signal. But anyway, let's change the amplitude and see at what is the biggest amplitude I can get out of this uh, this circuit in the way that it's set up now with its biasing. So as you can see it's now the top is going to start clipping before the bottom so if I change the bias point uh, just tiny touch of it I now find myself inside there and then I'm on 5 volts, so my original signal is 5 volts peak to peak um, and 2 volts per division. And I got so effectively, well, the cursor is giving me 9.68, so that's a little bit of loss in there. So, you know, if I was to turn that up anymore, then we start getting distortion top and bottom, even though the main input signal is still alright. So, 5 volts gives me a nice a nice output and I'm not clipping I'm just point where I'm just about to start clipping top and bottom which is brilliant so that shows that this amplifier um, and if I change that bias point again turn it down I get clipped turn it up I get clipped get it just in the middle I get a nice nice sine wave output without clipping but um you know that's brilliant it does what I want it to I've learned how to control the bias on a single rail um, op amp to give me a nice biased output to get that nice sine wave which is brilliant I suppose if I was taking it as a proper output I'd then put it through a capacitor to remove the DC and that would be brilliant. So there you go an inverting op amp um, I uh, appear to have got control of that uh, inverting op amp and uh, seems to do what I want it to eventually it took me a little while to uh, to get control of it um, even though you don't see all the uh, the bits in between the, the cursing and the fretting and the wondering what on earth is going on but um but yeah managed to get there got it working got on a, an output on the scope and it seems to be doing what I want it to do which is brilliant can't say better than that give it a go yourself and see what you come out with if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you don't, you know what to do. Subscribe, and all comments are welcome. See you next time.